This is a lesson on designing experiments. Um, it is the last lesson of the unit and um, it's just a couple of examples that we'll go through. So the first one is Josie did an experiment. She used a spinner with green, yellow, red, and blue parts. Her results are below. What might Josie's spinner look like? And we're also going to assume that her results match very closely what you would have predicted the spinner would have gotten. Okay? So what you need to do is pause the video right now and see if you can uh, create the spinner that might have, have uh, done this. Um, and please just do this in pencil so that if you are really off to the answer, then you can erase and then do um, closer to the real answer. But try on your own first because that's what the lesson is going to be is given something like this and then you have to design the experiment. Okay, so pause the video now and try out the spinner. Okay, so this is how to figure it out. Um, first, you look at how many um, tallies this one has compared to the other ones. The big one you want to figure out first, basically, because we know green, red, and blue are going to be the same size, and we know yellow needs to be bigger because there's more, right? Um, so we can even, we don't need to look at this as 10 and 30. You can just look at this as 2, um, 6, 2, and 2. So uh, there's a couple of ways that you could do this. You could count up all of the tallies, I guess. You could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there are 12 total. And um, in yellow, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 out of 12 pieces would be yellow, you could say. So I could turn this into 12 pieces and then color it, color 6 of them. Um, but I happen to know that 6 or I guess 12 divided by 6 is 2, right? Because there's 12 pieces and then um, 6 is half of 12. So I can just, I can figure out right now that half of this spinner is going to be yellow. Oops. Just like that because 6 is half of 12, which is the total number. And then all I have to do now is divide this uh, rest of it up into equal pieces. So that means that I need a green, a red, and a blue. So there's green. Next, I need a red. And finally, I will need a blue. And I will color that in. With blue. So here should look something similar to this. The green, red, and blue could be in different orders, but you need to have yellow as half, and then the other ones, they're, they're technically, I guess, they would be sixths of the total. Okay, but um, just to make it easier, like I said, you could have just divided the piece, the circle up into 12 pieces, and then colored six of them yellow, two of them green, two of them red, and two of them blue, and then you would have called her a day. Now, if you did do that, it would look something like this. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six yellow, one, two blue, one, two red, and one, two green. You'll notice that um, I didn't change any of the color spots. I just added lines. So you could do that too. Um, moving on, we've got another one, and you're going to uh, be required to have counters this time, and I guess the instructions are over in my other document here. Um, and it says, you need uh, a container, 10 red counters and 10 green counters. Now it could be any, technically it could be any. So it could be like 10 blue counters and 10 pink counters or whatever. Just has to be 10 of one color and 10 of another color. Um, so what you need to do is you need to decide how many counters of each color to put in the container to get the following results. Then perform each experiment by pulling a counter out of the container, recording your results, and then putting the counter back in. Do this 20 times per experiment. So there are three ex experiments. The first one asks you to design an, an experiment where you will, will remove a red counter, uh, 
less le than a green. So it's less likely that you will remove a red counter than a green. Second is removing a red counter is more likely than removing a green counter. And the third one is removing a red counter and a green counter are equally likely. So you need to, in these spaces, write how many red and how many green you would put in each one. Then perform um, the experiment just to see if that's, that works out that way. Okay, um, so pause the video and assign numbers to each of the blanks. We'll go through those and then uh, that will be the end of the video, but you'll perform the experiments and then do the assignment. Okay, so pause the video now and assign numbers to those things. Okay, so um, if you want to remove a, a red counter less often than a green counter, then you might put something like, um, that's not going to work, <laughs> uh, three red and maybe 10 green. Okay, as long as you have a significant more amount of green than red, then you're good. If you had like eight red and 10 green, then, um, well, I guess technically it is less likely, but it's just not that much less likely. Uh, you could have had one red and yeah, it's up to you. Um, next one, removing a red counter is more likely than removing a green counter. So you could just flip those numbers. You could say, okay, 10 red counters and three green counters. And then the last one, removing a red counter and a green counter are equally likely. So then you would go 10 and 10. Okay, so perform this experiment and see if you do get um, something similar to this. So so maybe you get uh, 16 here and 4 here or whatever, but you'll do the tallies and just see. Okay, and then um, once you finish that, then you will go to your textbook assignment. And I've got a nice frog here because I couldn't fit assignment on uh, the, the previous page. There just was no room. And so I figured I should fill up the space. So here is a frog. Here's the assignment, page 285 to 286, numbers 1 to 6. And uh, there's an, also a reminder here that there will be a review next, followed by a unit test.